Alright, welcome back everyone. Let's play Half-Life Decay. So now we are moving on to the third mission, and this is where things get a little bit trickier. Uh, we're starting out as Gina in this one for whatever reason. I think we usually start out as Colette, even just because of the fact that we have, uh, or maybe I'm going insane, I don't know. I'm just used to seeing the orange uh, HUD display uh, like Gordon Freeman, and thinking of that as the default, so... There we go. But uh, also, if you notice our our um, first person view with our arm there, our arm is still orange like on uh, Gordon Freeman's suit, even though our actual suits are completely different colors from that. Anyway, um, in this room here, there's going to be some stuff. I don't want to get all of the stuff with Gina. I want to get some of it with Colette. But uh, the reason why this, this uh, particular level is pretty dangerous is because you can't really leave one character too far behind because uh, the, the level will start to loop around and eventually enemies will spawn in places you have already been and will then endanger the other character. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and collect some all the stuff that's over here and we're going to proceed to the next area. There's only a handful of puzzles here and none of them are really all that difficult to um, comprehend but we can't do anything with that right now. That'll be our final objective so we'll have to come back through here over here. And we're going to get some more Vortigaunts. Don't we just love these guys? They're so cuddly. But uh, I actually died quite a few times the first time I got to play this on co-op with a friend. and uh, Or we died rather quite a few times, which was uh, really annoying because unlike in the normal campaign, because there's no save feature with these individual levels that can be manually selected, you have to redo the whole thing from the beginning, which means that you have not gained a single ounce of progress if um, progress can be measured in weight or volume. Which it can't, so uh, without that horrible analogy out of the way, we're going to go ahead and kill more Vortigaunts. And uh, there is a pack of exploding barrels here, which are blue for a change, but they still explode just the same. And uh, they're blocking the tram rail, which confuses me to no end. I have no idea why they're there and what purpose they could have served blocking the path of the, uh, the rail. But, um... As you know from the normal Half-Life uh, Half Life campaign, rather, you can, unlike in Quake 2, you can drop dead for no reason at all in this game from time to time. So, um, well, not for no reason at all, but just for the sake of uh, really stupid things that can kill you instantly, unlike in Half-Life 2 as well. So, uh, that's not really a flaw, just sort of not being able to defend yourself in this version. So, with those kind of things, um, that can make these missions in Decay very annoying from time to time. But, um... We should be fine, though. The nice thing about it is it's much simpler to edit because we don't have to find out the... Uh, we do... It's all... All these are done in one take, so if I die, the whole take is ruined. And I just have to start it all the way from the beginning, which means that um, this will all be one single flawless recording if, it's, if it goes successfully. So yay for that. I'm not sure if there's anything in these giant crates over here because I don't believe we have any means of blowing them up at the moment, so... We're going to ignore them and move on. Now we're going to bring uh, Colette over here. I think I've gone far enough with Gina to where uh, her uh, Colette's maxed resources, will, or um, higher resources at least, will be uh, more useful. There's a, if you notice stuff in the corner there, there's a Vortigaunt that spawns on the other side of that conveyor belt. And he screwed us over quite a few times, so just remember that he's there. And try to just lure him over here instead of running in where the first two guys spawn. That's uh, what seems to be working this time at least. I'm not sure if the Vortigaunts actually have any location damage, like if they react to headshots at all. I would think they would, but I really can't tell. Their heads are in a weird place. At least they're somewhat humanoid to where you'd think if they're, you shoot them in the head, they'd take additional damage. But um, here's the, this level's gimmick puzzle is in this room. I'm going to kill a side crab and then deal with it. Uh, there is, as you can see, some toxic waste that has spilled over this rail, so uh, we will not be able to traverse it on foot without dying horribly so what we're gonna do is we have these switches here that can move the uh, the mine carts or whatever they are back and forth so we need to get one character uh, yawn, on top of it and then move it to the other side and uh, proceed like that so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get Gina up on this one switch back to Colette and have her push the button to get Gina over to this side and then we're going to get off and uh, go ahead and send it back over there with Colette. And then this button is going to move this one over here. Now I actually I screwed it up just then because you're supposed to get Colette on top of the one over here so she can jump onto the one that Gina's sending over to her uh, when it comes across. So 
Yeah, Valve was good at puzzle solving and co-op from day one. Portal 2 started from this, essentially. <laughs> and so unfortunately, since she, she, since she is riding it the way back, I'm going to have to press the button again to send her on the proper way, which is over to this side. This one does not stop in the middle. It goes all the way from one side to the other. So, um... Over here is where the card that rides in the middle is. Now that, now that Colette's over here, she can keep going. But in order to get Gina over here, we have to send a uh, card over there. And there's an enemy going to spawn right here. And we're just going to watch him and wait. And boom. He just sort of dies. That's always what happens. Like, I've never had it happen any other way. He just kind of pushes him into the toxic waste. And that's the end of it. Never a threat at all. So we're going to bring Gina over here to the other side with this much shorter minecart conveyor belt contraption type rail thingy that is seems very impractical with how short it is, but we're not going to argue with that because this is Black Mesa and Black Mesa never makes sense. So uh, now we're going to go ahead and move over to this next area where there are more headcrabs awaiting us, and there's quite a few headcrabs in this area, I might add. There's one that lived for some reason yet still just wants to sit around and not attack me. And there's more Vorticons down here. The thing is, is you can't really dodge a, um, a Vorticons shot by going left to right unless there you can get behind cover so there's something that can hit it before you can before you are hit by it. So uh, they're incredibly difficult to dodge because they hit instantaneously. I mean, how are you going to dodge lightning? So uh, the best way to dodge Vortigon attacks is by just going back behind a cover or source of cover like a wall and just um, dodging it like that. But I was not able to do that in the hallway back there because it was just too long and there was no room to move side to side, so. Anyway, over here are some more strangely blue exploding barrels, and if I can get them to blow up at the right time, they'll take all those Vortigons to spawn in with it. But unfortunately, I think one of them teleported in just a little bit too late. I think he's kind of glitched out. There we go. He has been gunned down for such a horrible crime of glitching. And I think I've gotten just about far enough to where... We're right in front of where more enemies would spawn with Colette, but I'm not too worried about it, so I'm going to go ahead and bring Gina. Sorry if it's confusing for me to refer to them by their first names, because they're more often referred to as Dr. Cross and Dr. Green. So it's Dr. Gina Cross and Dr. Colette Green, so that's if that's any, more, uh, any less confusing, then um, there you go. I don't think there was anyone in uh, in Half-Life 2 that I referred to particularly by their uh, their last name instead of their first name, except for maybe Freeman just as Freeman instead of Gordon Freeman, or maybe uh, Dr. Breen as just Dr. Breen instead of uh, whatever his name is, Wallace, or whatever his first name is. And so now we've arrived in this random office place. Yeah, the, the enemies out here on, this, on the uh, sand area out here, we're certainly encountering the outdoors much earlier on in this campaign than we were in the actual Half-Life campaign, but it's still nothing compared to opposing force. Yeah, the enemies that spawn out here, this is actually a pretty tricky encounter. You definitely don't want to bring both characters out here if you're not in control of them both, or if one of them is really low on health. So I'm going to have uh, Colette go over here because she needs more health and stuff. So she's going to pick up that health as well. Obviously these steel crates cannot be broken, and uh, I don't think there's really anything else that's in here. Yeah, this is pretty much a useless area aside from that health. So uh, this is the exit right here, which will allow us to bring uh, what's his name in here. I forgot his name again. And hope there we go. Thank God. One time he actually did glitch out on me, and his uh, pathfinding completely failed, and he uh, failed to path find his path as he would with such a glitch. There's a random crate up there. I don't think that has anything in it, though, so I'm not going to go out of my way to try to break it. But uh, the problem is enemies are going to spawn out there where we first entered, in the, uh, the, the right over in the area where he first came in. So Gina might actually be in kind of a bad spot right now. But we need her down here for the final objective. She should be fine over here, but we're going to go ahead and get outside. That's the wrong way. There we go. And like I said, there's a few enemies going to spawn out here, and a lot of times the Vortigons can shoot through the door. So you definitely want to be careful of this encounter. This is where we died multiple times. 
because uh, the this first this character.